Hi, and welcome to Real Life with Jenny. My name's Jenny Senapadaratna. Grab your favorite drink and a snack and we will get started. Today, I'm drinking toasted coconut almond bark black tea. Mm -hmm. And I have some ginger biscuits from Delta Airlines. I know, I'm really living at large today, but I do love those Delta Airline cookies. I Every time we're on one of those planes, I'm like, Joni, my sister, grab some extras because I would like to eat them later. <laughs> Anyway, let's get real. So this weekend, we had the privilege of traveling to a small town in Minnesota to speak. Um, it was called International Falls. So if you've never been to International Falls, Minnesota, it is cold. <laughs> okay, it's more than cold, but it is called the icebox of the nation. Um, and there's another place in the United States that also calls them that, but calls himself that. But that's a long story. Anyway, it is a small town of about 6,000 people, and it's got a very unique culture. I absolutely fell in love with the town, the church, the pastor, and his wife, um, especially his wife was a hoot, and I loved her. Um, kind of wish she moved closer to me so we could be BFFs. Anyway, um, it was just a very unique town. Um, and I found out a story while we were with the pastor and his wife that really kind of struck a chord with me. So I'm going to tell you a little story. So story time with Jenny. Grab your tea. Here we go. Or maybe you're not drinking tea. I'm drinking tea. Anyway, grab your grab your drink. Let's get storytelling. So about 1980 is my research online. So I could be wrong. So I'm adding to their story because I researched. This guy named Vic owned a piece of on some island that the government wanted to buy to make into a national park. So everybody owned this land and the government said, this is a beautiful area, let's make it into a park and started buying everybody's land and their cabins and their homes and this guy owned an island. And so he decided to make it difficult for the government and gave one foot parcels to all of his friends and family. So the government had to buy one foot at a time of his entire island instead of just writing him out a check because he didn't want them to have it. He needed to make it difficult for them. And so in the midst of this whole thing, he came up with a great idea of ordering a 25 foot statue of himself. Um... <laughs> I don't know. It seems like a very unique idea. So he flew in via helicopter, flew in a 25 foot statue of himself and put it on his land. Now, because it is right next to Canada in Minnesota, there is a river that kind of goes between Minnesota and Canada and you can throw a stone if you're strong and I'm not. I tried. It didn't work. Um, but you can throw a stone to Canada. It is that close. And so he flew the helicopter through Canada so they could confiscate it and say, you got it here illegally. So they took away his statue. And eventually he sold his land to the government. And with that agreement, he got to bring in another statue. So he built another statue of himself and they put it up in the area. So now there's a 25 foot statue up there in the International Falls area. I believe it's in Rainer. And you can go see this guy and his legacy of kind of holding out against the government. <laughs> and you actually, he, the other one was returned back to him. And that was, is put on the side of the road um, on 35W in Minnesota. And so we actually saw that one on the way home. But it made me start thinking about, like, I'm not really that kind of person. You are never going to find a 25-foot statue of Jenny anywhere. It is just not going to happen. Um, I don't even like to have my photos taken. I like to be behind the camera. And don't even get me started talking about selfies because they are a mess. And I do not know how people do them so beautifully. <laughs> So you're not going to find that kind of thing to kind of represent who I am. So it started making me think about like, what do I want to be left behind when I pass on? I don't believe he's still with us anymore. Um, I don't know. I actually didn't look up whether he was still alive. I don't think he is. But this is his legacy. This 
weird story about him standing up against the government, making things difficult, and making two statues of himself. That is his legacy. I don't know anything else about this guy, right? So I'm thinking, what do I want my legacy to be? And that is always like the big question, right? We all are like, what do you want? What do you want people to think about when you're gone? And and I was like, okay, I don't like to think about being gone. That's always kind of a, because then you start thinking about like your kids and their kids and, you know, all. so don't go down that path. But what do you want your legacy to be? So maybe you want to construct a 25 foot sculpture of yourself. Okay, good. Bravo to you. That's not my jam. Um, but I started thinking about what I really wanted. And so there were three things that I kind of came up with that I want to be remembered for. Um, whether I am doing a great job at it or not, that is a totally different story. But I have three things that I really want to be known for. One of those is being authentic. I want people to read my books, to listen to my speaking, to listen to my podcast, to talk to me in person and realize that my, what's coming out of my mouth is authentic and what I really believe and not necessarily um, what I've been told to believe. It is really who I am and that you see who I am, the good, the bad, the ugly. You see it all. Um, that I'm authentic. That is really, really important to me. Now, am I an exaggerator? Yes, we know that I can exaggerate a little bit. I do know that his statue is 25 feet tall because originally I was like, it's like 60 feet tall. And then I was researched and it was only 25 feet. Womp womp. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know that I've ever seen a 60 foot statue. But there we are. So I really want to be a person that is known for my my authenticity. That is really something that I value. Another thing that I very much value is I value being a person that has hope. I want to be known that no matter what life throws at me, Jenny never gave up. (laughs) Because you know what? I have not given up yet. And that is a hard thing. It is hard to keep a smile on your face. And yes, normally there's no smile. Um, Well, the days, some days there's no smile. It's really hard to keep up that God is in control and that he loves me. And that is a soundtrack that is really hard for me to keep in my head. So yesterday I had some things, including jury duty, come in the mail. And I was like, Lord, what in the world is going on? I can't do this. There's A, B, and C happening. And I don't know how this is going to work. And I'm freaking out. And I'm just spiraling. Honestly, it was just like a moment of like, what else could go wrong? I actually had to go to the doctor yesterday for like a yearly kidney stone look. Um, and I was like, the way things are going, is just not going to be good. I just don't even want to go because I should really go another day because today's is not a good day. And I had to rewrite that in my mind. I had to take that soundtrack of doom and gloom and give it to God and say, God, you are my hope. You are the one that is in charge of my health. You are the one that's in charge of my finances. You are the one that's in charge of my relationships. I need to give those to you and trust that you have a better plan than I do and have that hope that he has a better plan than I do. I say it all the time because honestly, that's what I'm living. I'm living a, I don't see hope. I don't see it. I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I don't see, (laughs) I'm in a dark place. And I want to see, the only way that I see it is with my heart and that I trust that God has a better plan. So hope is something that I really pray that people see in me um, when I'm gone and that my daughter learns and that she learns to have hope even in the midst of tragedy and loss because life is about tragedy and loss. Unfortunately, that is part of you lose things, little things, big things, people in many, many different ways. And to continue to have hope no matter what's going on is really hard. And so I'm looking at scriptures going, Lord, but you promised this. And Lord, you promised this. And holding on to those things and rewriting that soundtrack in my mind. The third legacy that I would really love for people to have about me 
um, is really an odd one. <laughs> I want to be someone that people went to or do go to because they need prayer. I want to be someone that they know because I have hope, because I'm authentic, that when I say I'm praying for you, it's not a um, now I lay me down to sleep kind of prayer. It is a prayer that I'm going before the Lord and I'm saying, do you see this, Lord? I need you to hold them up. Lord, you know I don't. A lot of times I don't even know the details of what is going on in someone's life when they ask me to pray. But I want to be someone that behind the scenes is praying and that when my friend is going through something little or big, they can email me or text me or give me a call or send me a pigeon, whatever, <laughs> and say, Jenny, I need you to pray. In fact, I have a dear friend that doesn't use it as often as I would like, but I have said in the midst of a meeting at your work or whatever, if you need prayer, just send me the word, P, the letter P and I will be praying. I don't need to know the details, but I want to be someone that people can count on when you can't, because a lot of times when I was talking about hope, you get to the point that you can't carry something anymore. It just becomes too much. You're like, I can't do this. I can't pray for my marriage anymore. I can't pray for my finances anymore. It, I'm overwhelmed. There are so many things going on and you just need to know someone else is standing beside you. And I want to be the kind of person that people can depend on and send me something. Now, do I pray for years and years? No, normally I don't. Um, that is not, I haven't been called. There are a couple people that I have committed to pray for for long periods of time and other people that I pray for when they need help. And I want to be that person for, for certain people, probably not for the entire world. <laughs> That's not going to happen because I don't commit to pray for people unless I really feel like I can follow through. So I guess that goes back to my authenticity. Anyway, but my question to you as I've been talking, what has struck a chord with you? What in your life do you value that maybe you struggle with too, that you're not necessarily following all the way through? Are you a person that wants to be known as a person of hope and joy and laughter and really it's not working that way? <laughs> you know, are there things that you really value that you're not living up to? I know there are for me. And so this week has kind of been one of those weeks that I've refocused. And that's what I want you to do this week. I want you to refocus on what you find is important. What do you value? They do not need to be the three values that I have, obviously. Um, you can value getting a 25-foot statue. I'm fine with that. Please call me. I'd love to have my picture or my daughter's picture taken in front of it, not mine. Um, <laughs> you know, so... What do you value? What kind of legacy do you want to leave behind? I'm going to ask you this week just to take a few moments and think about what kind of legacy you're currently leaving behind. Is it a legacy of anxiousness and worry and anger? Is it a legacy of joy and peace? What kind of legacy are you leaving behind right now? What do people think about you? What do people say about you when you're not in the room? Um, I don't want to know that, to be honest. Don't tell me what people are saying behind my back. I'm doing my best, right? I am doing the best that I can, but I can always improve. And so this week, take a few moments to think about what kind of legacy you want to leave behind and that you are leaving behind and what small changes you could make to make that a difference. I know for me, with hope, I am finding scriptures to memorize and have run through my head. I want to know that when I get done at the end of this world and I can go up to heaven and he said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to know that. I want to know that I'm someone that he trusts. And so I'm going through scriptures to try to rewrite the script in my head of how life is horrible and rewrite it with God's hope. So that's what I'm trying to do to improve that. What will you do this week to make your legacy different than it is right now? Well, that is all for this week. You can find us at Real Life with Jenny on Instagram and Facebook. You can also find us at ChristConnection.cc slash Jen. All of my information is there. Um, I would love to connect with you. I hope that you all have a great week, kind of doing a little bit of soul searching, and let's rewrite our legacies.